We are here to predict the nominations for the comedy lead acting categories. Kevin, what do you think about comedy lead actress? Oh boy. Well, um, this is going to be an interesting race. I think it has gone uh, in a few different directions that I might not have expected, but I think with the fact that we have three different people, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and Natasha Lyonne, who are not here that were last year, there's a lot of fluidity here that could result in the cream rising to the top. And in this case, I'm talking about Catherine O'Hara in Schitt's Creek, who is someone who a lot of people are hoping get an Emmy out of anyone in this cast of Schitt's Creek. This is the push <laughs> to get her that Emmy. She has done very well at the Canadian Screen Awards. Not that that influences anything with Emmys, but is certainly someone who, yeah, uh, you know, a, she has been recognized and people love when she's recognized. She had a great speech um, on, on Twitter that she posted because obviously they couldn't gather. But regardless, I do think she is just that classic type of uh, performance that the Emmys are finally getting around to. Something like a Kyle Chandler in Friday Night Lights, as weird as that example might be, just, you know, someone who gets in for the penultimate season, gets nominated, finally, everyone's so excited, they broke through, and then here comes the final season, it's time to reward them, because the competition itself, I don't think there's anyone else here that uh, has that kind of a narrative at this point, so... You know, I think she's very much, very much the front runner here. We obviously have people like Rachel Brosnahan and I guess Christina Applegate could consider to be could be considered another just perennial nominee at this point. And that is very exciting. Um, Linda Cardellini, I think, is probably going to go along with Christina at this point. And that to me is certainly a very, very popular show on Netflix. At least it was when it was released i i don't know how much that's persisted um in the in the months since it's been out but uh you know i feel like you just can't really have one without the other just because they work so well together and then beyond that it's a little bit hazy as to the rest of the competition but personally speaking i have pamela adlon and Issa ray just filling filling that out as to previous nominees I think you pretty much uh, nailed it. I think uh, the first four that you mentioned, uh, well, I only feel very confident in the first three. So Catherine O'Hara, yeah. Rachel Brosnahan, and Christina Applegate. Christina Applegate was able to get in last year as the only nomination for Dead to Me. Um, I feel like she put that show on the map. Um, she, she got, got in everywhere, too. Exactly. Yeah. She, is, she got in everywhere. So I feel like she's an a surefire lock this year. I think she's definitely going to carry along um, Linda Cardellini. She should have been nominated for the first season, but I understand why she didn't. The competition last year was insane, but she brought it in the second season. Um, and I would even say she was better in the second season than she was in the first, both of them. Totally. So um, I see them getting in. I see Dead to Me getting into a few categories. Um, but outside of that, as you said, Kevin, it's a bit of a question mark. Um, we have so many people who could return from past years. Um, Pamela Adlon and Issa Rae are just two of them. We have Alice and Janney for mom. We have uh, the two Grace and Frankie gals, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Um, we, there are just so many possibilities um, that it's just very difficult to figure out who exactly, which one of them is going to get in, or if maybe two of them are getting in. Um, I also have Pamela Adlon in fifth. Who I have in sixth is still Merritt Weaver for run. Um, the show lost a lot of steam toward the end, um, but I feel like Merritt Weaver is the one that was still thoroughly praised, and we know she's uh, beloved by the TV Academy. She's won twice. She's also eligible for um, Unbelievable in the limited, ser limited actress category, um, but something that Riley mentioned last time is that it's difficult to get into two lead categories in the same year, so that could be something that hurts her too. Um, it, it's a very confusing uh, field. I feel like top three or four are sort of secure, but outside of that, it's very difficult to predict who will get in. Yeah, I agree with pretty much all that. It's hard to tell because last year the category was so competitive that all these people were pushed out, but we're not sure who was actually pushed out because of the heavy competition last year or who just kind of fell off. 
as you know people do at the Emmys after a while. Right. Uh, so I've got in the last few slots I've handled Adlon because it seems like people still like better things. Uh, it can still pop up for random nominations at the guilds here and there. Um, and unlike East Ray, for example, like Pamela Adlon has been nominated more, and it wasn't just when the show's ratings were high. Like East Ray has gotten in one time, which was the season where Insecure was after Game of Thrones, so it had much more people watching it than in other years. Uh, and then I've got Merritt Weaver in sixth. Um, it, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of love for Run. Uh, if you look at the IMDb ratings, uh, I actually went back many years to try to find, you know, with Run and Space Force, like what are examples of series where it doesn't really seem like people are that on board with the shows, but the leads can still get in. Uh, the example I found was uh, Melissa McCarthy for Mike and Molly. That was also a six point something uh, on that website. Uh, so that is precedent, and you know she is another person that they just love, uh, and that's why I kind of have Merritt Weaver in because she does seem to win Emmys and get nominated uh, more often than you might expect. Uh, she is also helped by how the show aired so recently, um, so people are still kind of thinking about it, and also it has some goodwill from Phoebe Waller Bridge doing Fleabag last year and now doing this this year. Uh, I'm watching out for Kristen Bell in The Good Place, who has yeah. missed for every season. But, you know, at this point with the competition, uh, with this being her last chance, kind of, why not? Yeah. And, and she's very loved in the industry, so. Yeah, and good, The Good Place is one of the shows I feel like we, I'm guessing we're all predicting and we feel more confident in than in other shows in the comedy series race. So realistically, I don't see why she wouldn't get in. Um, but I don't have her in because she's never been nominated for the show. Um, but I could easily see this being also a career nomination because she really, she's never been nominated before. And she's, I feel like she might have built up a lot of goodwill over the last few years. Um, so this is her year to really break in, uh, to break through. Um, so I hope it happens, but um, I'm just because it's never happened, uh, I, I, I haven't put her in. But there are a few other people who we could see getting in. We have Aquafina for Nora from Queens. Um, Aquafina obviously won the Golden Globe earlier this year for the farewell. Um, so if any of that love translates here, um, I could see her uh, sneaking in, even though I feel like the show might actually be uh, her hurdle because I don't know if it was uh, widely seen or if it's something that is in the Academy's wheelhouse. Um, and we also have Elle Fanning for The Great, which is uh, a show that uh, just premiered on Hulu not too long ago. Um, it's For me, it depends more on whether Hulu is able to mount a good campaign for the show. Um, the Handmaid's Tale is sort of one of the only shows that's, that it's been able to get or that's been able to uh, break through at the Emmys. So uh, I think it would need a big campaign to uh, break into these comedy series categories, as I don't know if it's, again, in the Academy's uh, wheelhouse. I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, Luca, but there's also Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish, right, right. who is a possibility. A possibility. I think there's a sense that Blackish is one of those shows that's falling off, but... I mean, I don't know, just with, with what's happening in the world right now, it's like, you know, I think there yes. might be a, a need to celebrate um, stories from Black creators. And that's something, that's one of the reasons I have Issa Rae, which Insecure is airing now. And uh, mm -hmm. so, and, and I've, plus I've just heard a lot of people on my Twitter feed, for example, talking about Insecure and the value that that has. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's something to think about maybe. Absolutely. And, or I guess, or Riley, do you want to go ahead? No, that, that, that's all I have for this category. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess a few names I'll still mention. Um, we have Zoe Kravitz for High Fidelity. Um, again, this is, this is a Hulu comedy. Um, and as I mentioned for The Great, I don't know how good Hulu will be at uh, getting shows that aren't The Handmaid's Tale um, into Emmy categories. But uh, she's also someone who's on the ballot for the second season of Big Little Lies. Um, so she could just be a wild card. And someone else who could be a wild card is Jane Levy for Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Um, the show, 
you know, it might be one of those shows that was a feel good show for people during uh, this uh, pandemic. Um, it's a big push from uh, NBC. That's something we should probably mention. Yeah. And uh, she's also been uh, on quite a few shows in the last few years. So um, I, I, I'm keeping her on my radar, but um, it, it's very difficult to see whether, you know, Kristen Bell or um, Jane Levy gets in because uh, tech, realistically, The Good Place is the more, obviously, the more buzzed about NBC show and the one that has the better chances of breaking through at the Emmys. But um, sometimes these f surprises happen. So I, as I said, I'm keeping her on my radar. <laughs> Yeah, so over in comedy lead actor, if I have this right, we actually match five out of six, the three of us. Uh, we all have Eugene Levy for Shit's Creek, Ted Danson for The Good Place, Larry David for Every Enthusiasm, Michael Douglas for The Kaminsky Method. And we also all have Don Cheadle for Black Monday, even though he is not predicted by the Bull Derby combined odds. Uh, and then uh, Luca, you have Anthony Anderson, uh, and then Kevin, you've got Rami Youssef, who is actually predicted uh, by the odds. Uh, so why do you have Rami Youssef? What's the case for him? Uh, well, I mean, there's just a lot of buzz around Rami right right now, at the very least. Who knows if that will sustain itself? Again, it's always hard to tell, but um, that is just one of the best reviewed shows out right now from from this tv season and i think it's a, a a well he won a golden globe for it that doesn't always translate as we know but i think he is someone and he is a personality he is one of those kinds of people like a aziz ansari kind of a person who is you know a creator and writer and comedian and actor type of person that they just usually tend to love in this category so and I think he could possibly even contend for the win. The issue will just oh, be wow. getting nominated. Yeah, because I think this is a category that is desperate for a front runner. Oh, yeah. And yeah. yeah, so who knows? It, it's interesting that you mentioned that Rami has buzz because that's kind of why I'm not predicting him and that I feel like the show had just came out and I'm not hearing anybody talk about it really so much. Uh, and in terms of it being uh, like well reviewed, like it does have the good reviews, but I, I think we're all kind of looking for Rami to be the next Fleabag, right? But you know, Rami came back and it got 84 on Metacritic, Fleabag got 96, uh, and Rami was only reviewed by nine critics on Metacritic, where it seems like even the critics are not talking about it so much. So yeah, and, and then you compare it to Master of None, which was on Netflix. I, I just feel like there uh, are actually not very many people who have seen Rami. Uh, so that's why I don't have him in. I just think the people who have are quite passionate about it, and sometimes that's enough. Yeah, I feel like you both bring up uh, very good uh, arguments. Um, I also don't have him in, uh, like Riley, for the same reasons uh, that he mentioned. I had him in at the beginning of the season. Um, I felt like his Golden Globe win was definitely going to propel his chances. Um, and I think it helps him that he's contending for the second season. I think the second season seems more real. It seems like the season that might be able to get him in rather than last year. Sometimes actors just need to build up a, a bit more goodwill. And I feel like that could happen this year. Um, but what I decided to do then is just put in two Emmy favorites, which was one of them was Don Cheadle, who's been nominated so many times. He was nominated for Black Monday last year. For, there's really no reason why he shouldn't return. The same for Anthony Anderson. He's been nominated five times for this role. He's never missed for Blackish. He was nominated last year. The category is wide open. Um, all the circumstances considered, I don't see why all of a sudden they would drop him this year with this field, as I said, so wide open. Um, Obviously, Blackish is not what it used to be at the Emmys. Um, it's sort of old news there, but um, he they, he was the first one to get nominated for the show, and I feel like he'll be the last one always to be nominated for it. So well, he already was last year. year. <laughs> yeah, last year exactly, and I but, feel like he'll be able to continue getting in until the category gets too crowded. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That's, that, that's how it is. Uh, I've got Dave Bird in sixth, uh, just because I feel very confident about Dave 
overall. And when I say very confident, I mean that I have it in sixth place for series. Um, wow. And, you know, sometimes when a show is nominated for series, they can get their lead actor nominated as well. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably replace him with uh, Anthony Anderson. But we do have a lot of people here that we should probably talk about. I mean, we should, the Steve Carell being one of them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, for the Space Force. Um, I feel like he could have easily gotten in if the reviews for Space Force or the reception in general had been better, but uh, it just didn't take off. Um, so um, I, hey. I had him in for <laughs> I had him in for a, a brief moment, but um, and it's again going back to what Riley mentioned one time, which was he's already contending for the morning show in lead in in the drama category. So if he gets in there, maybe it's difficult to, for him to break into do two comedy actor uh, into two lead categories. Um, but uh, the main reason for me is just. Space Force and the fact that uh, the reviews were not good or the perception in general. Yeah. I will say though, it seems like tons of people are watching Space Force. Like That's it got right. like 20,000 yeah. ratings on IMDb in like the first few days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think people were excited about it for the people involved with it. Right. Uh, they just were curious about checking it out, plus the concept, clever. Um, but mm -hmm. once they actually saw it, very mixed reception very very yeah. mixed uh but speaking of steve carell you you should never count out ricky gervais for uh, mm -hmm. for afterlife um i was very surprised when he got in for derek um uh, then whenever that was 2014 or so um so i i think he's always in contention i mean ben platt for the politician yeah. uh Mm, I I go back and forth, but he's so young, and I that show was again very very mixed reception, mixed to negative. So, but what could help him is that the second season uh, airs. Yeah, uh, I believe is released in two weeks, so yep. it'll be right before uh, Emmy voting begins. So I think he's someone that could uh, just happen because of the second season because he's sort of on voter screens right before they vote. Um, but as you said, he he only got the Golden Globe nomination, um, and he and the politician aired way. But even though I just if it doesn't, it sh shouldn't matter that it aired way back in September if it comes back now. Um, but that's assuming that voters are going to sit down and watch it the minute it comes out, and we don't know whether that's the case. Um, I feel like Netflix would again need to mount a good campaign for it, um, and who knows, maybe it overperforms and we are just completely underestimating it. I mean, after Ryan all, it Murphy. is Ryan Murphy, exactly. And let we should mention that Ben Platt's performance is the is the definition of showy. I mean, he uh, does everything in that show. He sings, he cries, he has, you know, it. it's a very <laughs> big performance. So it's definitely in the Academy's wheelhouse. So uh, maybe, maybe we should look out for him. Yeah, you got to watch out for Netflix just because it seems like, you know, everybody has Netflix, everybody's watching it. I was very confused last year when Ricky Gervais didn't get nominated anywhere right. for Afterlife yes. uh, with that show being so widely seen and so widely liked, it seemed. And also with how he has, you know, that history of getting into this category uh, unexpectedly. Uh, Paul Rudd is another one that I'd watch out for for a Netflix show for Living With Yourself. Paul Rudd is obviously a very likable guy. He's got this dual role got his Golden Globe nomination, uh, so I could see him happening. Um, I'd love to see Martin Freeman nominated for Breeders. Uh, FX is sometimes, you know, more respected um, by the Emmys, and, you know, he's in a show that is made by people from Veep and himself, and he's a past Emmy winner, so we'll see. Did we mention Donald Gleason or we did Ron? Not. <laughs> yeah, we, if we mentioned Mary Weaver, we should probably uh, mention him. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that uh, he isn't uh, an Emmy favorite like Merritt Weaver. Um, I think she can survive the show's uh, reception. I don't know if he can. Um, I heard I haven't seen it, but I've I heard a lot of people talking about his finale, his performance in the finale. So I don't know if that's something that could help him. But um, I had him in at when I had run in series and felt very 
confident in Merritt Weaver, an actress, but uh, since I don't have the show in anymore and have Merritt Weaver all the way down in sixth, um, I don't see why I would put him in at this point. The only other person who is always a possibility, even though he didn't get in last year, is William H. Macy <laughs> for Shameless, which is incredibly old news by now, but in a category that feels a little bit empty, why not? <laughs> why not? Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw a few other names then. Uh, along those uh, why not lines, uh, how about Andy Samberg for Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Because there was a time this season where I actually did put in Brooklyn Nine-Nine into my comedy series prediction. Because I feel like so many people are catching up uh, with it on Netflix. Again, you know, people are maybe finally discovering the show. Maybe he'll finally break through, like, you know, once Shit's Creek was added to Netflix. And, <laughs> and then also uh, for Netflix, again, there's uh, Asa Butterfield for Sex right. Education, which competed as a drama last year and now as a comedy. And that's one of the shows where Netflix says, you know, everybody's watching this. And then I guess we have Jim Carrey for Kidding, someone who was uh, predicted last year after his uh, Golden Globe nomination. Um, but uh, I think if he, he would have gotten in last year if uh, this show was uh, on any road voters radar um but I, I think he's someone we should mention especially because i think the fans of kidding said the second season was even better than the first um so who knows this category is very wide open after i think the first four and uh even the first four i heard arguments for michael douglas as to why he uh, could miss but um at this point i feel like he got in last year um, and uh, he's Michael Douglas, so I don't see how he misses for the Kaminsky Method, a show that I have no idea how it's going to perform this year. <laughs> All right, let's move on to another slugfest, and that goes for you two viewers. 